In this video, let's take a look at the fourth component, which is the error message component. At the moment, for displaying error messages, we check if the field has been visited, check if the error exists, and if it does, we render that error. This again seems like a pattern across the different form fields. And when there is a pattern, Formic wants to help us out. And it is for this particular scenario, Formic provides the error message component. Let's learn step by step how to use the component in our YouTube form. Step 1. Import error message from Formic. Step 2. Replace the block of code rendering the error message with the error message component. Step 3. Pass in a name prop which is equal to the name attribute on the field component. So name is equal to name attribute, which is name for the first field. For the second one, error message, name is equal to email. Finally, for the third one, error message, name is equal to channel. Formatted. And that is all there is to it. Now this replacement is possible because the error message component behind the scenes will take care of rendering the error message for the particular field indicated by this name prop only if the field has been visited and if the error exists. Again, it is abstraction over what we were achieving manually. So that completes the refactoring and reduction of boilerplate code in our YouTube form. Let's head to the browser and test it out to ensure that the form still works as before. On page load, we have the initial value for the name field. If I clear it out, the error message gets displayed. Validation seems to work for the other fields as well. If we enter values, and click on submit, form submission also works fine. A refactored form component works as expected. The only thing which has changed is the styling of the error messages. They no longer appear in red color. You don't have to worry about that for now as we will go over the error message component details in another video. For now, we are happy that our form still works. But the key point here is that we have reduced the number of lines by a great extent. If I go back to VS Code, open old YouTube form, leaving out this validate function, we have nearly 80 plus lines of code and in the refactored form, we have it reduced to 50 plus. Again, granted, the formatting is different but the number of lines definitely has reduced. What is also great is that apart from reducing the number of lines, code readability also seems much better. Take a look at one single form control in our old YouTube form and take a look at a form control in our new YouTube form. And this advantage only gets better and better as the number of form fields increases. Let me quickly summarize the steps to refactor the form. First, import formic and then wrap your entire form with the formic component. This formic component accepts initial values, validation schema, and the onSubmit handler as props. Next, replace the form HTML tag with the form component from formic. This will automatically link the onSubmit event to the onSubmit method passed into Formic. After that, replace each of the form fields with the field component. This field component hooks into Formic using the name attribute. It will take care of handling the value, handling on change, and the onBlur event. Finally, for your error message, use the error message component, which conditionally renders the error corresponding to a form field only if the field has been visited and if the error exists. Alright, 
you should now have a fundamental understanding of how Formic works. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys in the next video.